So how do market forces cause exchange rates to rise and fall? So I'm going to talk about how shifts to supply and demand for currency can change the equilibrium exchange rate and cause appreciations or depreciation. Now usually I have E for the exchange rate where up is an appreciation and down is a depreciation. So this could be market for the dollar where up is a strengthening or appreciating dollar. Now the big things that I talk about usually are income, interest rates, the money supply, inflation, and then something I call expectations, which could be confidence in a country, it could be political developments, it could be a hurricane, sometimes diseases, other things can cause currencies to fall. Anything that causes people to want to invest or travel to or buy stuff from a country generally causes the currency to rise, but you could also have things that want people to pull out, maybe an election that, that people don't like the outcome, uh, like I mentioned, a major storm, high inflation, all these different things can cause a currency to fall. So if you can think of investors wanting to come in, so then they want that country's currency, we'll push it up. And, or if they want to leave, then, then they could pull their money out and cause the currency to fall. Right? So you can talk about that, that effect on investment. So a lot of times I just simply use demand, but it's important to understand that the supply curve is actually an upside down demand curve from the other country's point of view. So if you want more dollars, that might actually mean that the US dollar holders don't want to give them up. And so an increase in demand might actually also be a decrease in supply. But to keep it simple, I usually focus simply on demand. Uh, so again, the currencies appreciate if relative to the other country, GDP growth is faster. So one country could have really fast growth, but if one country has extremely fast growth, it's actually relatively faster. Right. Interest rates, again, you can look at the interest rate compared to the other countries. So if one major thing that happens is if the U.S. raises interest rates, the dollar will rise almost immediately. All right. Money supply increase. All right. So uh, money supply increase pushes down interest rates, and so that would actually cause the currency to, to fall. So cutting the money supply will raise rates and make the currency rise. All right. And so the, la the other last economic factor is inflation. If you have low inflation relative to another country, the currency will rise. And so growth, higher interest rates, and low inflation are the things that make people want to invest in a country. And so if you see here, the exchange rate rises, and that's an appreciation. So the causes of appreciation are all positive in terms of the economic fundamentals. Now, good expectations encompass a number of different things, and it, is, it could be just a guess as to how the future will hold. Sometimes it never even comes true, but anything that has to do with the political environment or investment climate, generally a positive political or investment climate would make investors demand more of the currency. And so those are the causes of an appreciating currency. Now, to make it complete, I could say, well, if foreigners want to hold U.S. dollars, then Americans want to give up less. If, if people want to come here, maybe Americans want to buy here as well, and so they'll be buying less from abroad. And so you might actually see less supply. But either way, this just augments the appreciation of the currency. So to be completely accurate, you might have supply move as well. But all of these positive effects might lead to an appreciation of a currency. Now, as you might guess, you could see that the opposite things cause a currency to fall. So to depreciate, you need the currency to go down. And so again, slow economic growth, a cut in interest rates, an increase in the money supply, or high inflation, or some sort of negative expectations of the future. Those are all things that will make the people want to buy fewer US dollars, and then the dollar would fall. At the same time, you might say, well, Americans might also want to get rid of the dollar if they want to buy foreign products or invest elsewhere. And so they might actually get rid of the dollars and be willing to supply them on the market. But either way, the dollar falls. And so a currency will depreciate if you have low growth, low interest rates, high money supply, or high inflation relative to the other country that you're pairing it with. And then non-economic factors, expectations would be negative as, as well, and that would contribute. Because these are financial assets, expectations actually play a larger role a lot of the time. That people buy and sell currencies like they buy and sell stocks. So understanding people's guesses of the future, understanding their confidence actually makes currencies move more than the GDP and the other factors. Would. So because it's financial, you have to you really put some importance on expectations. Now, let's say that this currency here, the market wants it to fall. So a lot of times you can have a market-oriented exchange rate that is going to fall because of 
market forces, low GDP growth, or a lot of times a cut in interest rates. Now, what this would mean is that you would actually have a falling currency that would affect exports, but it also could hurt a country's debt because if the currency weakens, that would actually make their debt more expensive if it's priced in another country's currency. So there's reasons why a weakening currency is bad, even if it does help your exports. But a lot, of, a lot of the time, a country might not want this market determined exchange rate to take hold. And so some countries have a specific goal of their central bank to keep their exchange rate fixed at a certain level that is mandated by the government in some way. And so if the currency wants to fall because of market forces, the central bank will actually step in and manipulate the currency using a variation of open market operations called currency interventions to keep the exchange rate at its old rate. Now, in higher level classes, I use an equation called interest rate parity. I usually don't use this model, but the way you could show this pretty simply is to say that if this currency wants to fall because of market forces, the central bank will actually buy up its currency, supplying less, and will bring it back to its old level. All right, so a falling currency is protected, a lot of times called defended, by selling foreign assets. And so central banks hold dollars, hold other countries' foreign assets like euros, and sometimes they hold gold as well. And so by selling foreign assets, they actually reduce their money supply. And that will bring the currency back to their predetermined price. All right, so um, some countries in Europe could keep their currencies locked onto the euro. Some countries in, in the Middle East that export oil will lock their currency onto the dollar. Um, and so they actually maintain their currency through buying and selling of these foreign reserves. All right, so a depreciating currency is defended by selling reserves. Now if you make that backwards, you can say an appreciating currency is defended by buying reserves. And so you can say the opposite for all these curves. You can say that if a currency is pushed up because of market forces, then a country will simply supply its own currency. And so what they will do is they will buy foreign assets and accumulate dollars, euros, or gold. And at the same time, that will cause them to have to print money on the other side of the balance sheet to maintain that balance. And so this actually means that the central bank holds more and more U.S. or European assets or gold, but at the same time, they have to issue currency to make up for it. And so that can cause inflation, and so it's, it's not always good for the countries that do that. But you can defend an, against an appreciation by doing the exact opposite. You can buy foreign assets and print money or create money or increase the money supply. So the fixed exchange rate is determined by the bank, and, in, and that rate is set. Sometimes it's changed periodically, but it's set by the central bank, and it is defended through the purchasing and sales of reserves. But the US, Europe, Japan, and Britain, other large market economies let their currencies float, which means that market forces push currencies up and down. And so these are the main economic fundamentals. And then expectations play a larger role because this is a financial asset. So understanding the causes of exchange rate movements, fundamentals and expectations, and then understanding the effects of exchange rate movements, exports and imports, as well as the dollar value of debt or the local currency value of debt, mean that Foreign countries sometimes have to worry about both their own economy, their own money supply, as well as their international economy and their exchange rate. And because this balance sheet is used for both domestic open market operations and foreign reserves, you actually can't do both at once. So adding the international economy means that countries have to juggle or balance domestic and international issues.